so welcome back to the second lecture on switch capacitor circuit so as of now uh, we discussed about the problems of sampling circuits and uh, whole phase circuits and we have seen bottom plate sampling and uh, now during the sampling phase whatever value is stored or sampled by the uh, switch which is stored in the which is held in the capacitor now now we'll see how i can process this signal further so assume that say some voltage is present in this capacitor vx now if i want to process this further or if i want to um, do the um, conversion uh, now sampling is done now next step is quantization so if i do uh, process further i need to uh, the first thing what i need to do is i should amplify the signal uh, i should get the, the more magn simply i should magnify the signal so uh, for that one basic uh, thing what i can do is i can definitely go for a, a amplifier like an op amp with um, all those uh, inverting non inverting configuration in order to multiply it but one other method uh, what i can use at this point is uh, with this understanding now assume that c is the capacitor what you have as a part of a sample and hold circuit and vx is the uh, voltage across that uh, now if i can transfer the entire charge in this capacitor to another capacitor which is half of the size of half capacity or half of the capacitance value the voltage will be actually double but you can see here uh, q is basically cv so uh, the voltage uh, in the capacitor the second capacitor with half the capacitance value will be twice of the initial voltage that can be understood by considering capacitors as two uh, vessels one uh, a wider vessel and one one uh, one with a narrow vessel and uh, say these are the charges uh, the water in the vessel is like charges so if i am pouring uh, this the water in this um, in this vessel which is this much height to this narrow vessel the height will be this much so this is the basic idea when i transfer charge from one capacitor to another capacitor with uh, half of the capacitance value the voltage is actually magnified in the same way i can try and <clears throat> uh, if i can uh, come uh, trans uh, come transfer the complete charges definitely voltage can be magnified so to do that what i am doing here is uh, assume that this is your initial part where you have one switch and this is the first capacitor and this is actually working at 5 and more which is a sampling phase now during hold phase whatever value is in the capacitor you should be transferred to another capacitor c2 uh, so uh, to check whether the uh, tra charge transfer is happening what we can do here is uh, we'll consider in two phases no need to consider this yellow part because we are looking how much transfer charge is transferred from c1 to c2 uh, now the initial charge on c1 uh, is c1 in, say it is c1 into v1 assume that initially we have the voltage stored during the first phase instead of vx we are assuming it as v1 and uh, on the charge on c2 is zero initially there is no charge when the switch is open and the total charge before the switching operation is c1 into v1 now uh, when the switch is closed when phi2 equal to vd the charge on c1 and charge on c2 both are both capacitors are coming in parallel so they will be charged to one final value and the charge can be written as c1 into v final on c1 and c2 into v final on uh, c2 now the total charge after uh, this uh, switching operation is so i can write like this so before switching uh, the total charge is c1 v1 after switching the total charge is c1 plus c2 into v final so by applying principle of conservation of charge i can write the charges before and after switching and we will get the v final as uh, this one c1 by c1 plus c2 into v1 so this is v final now the charge on c2 which it which is transferred from c1 is um, c2 value into the voltage which is v final that we have written here so it is uh, c2 into c1 v1 by c1 plus c2 right so initially the charge on c1 was uh, c1 into v1 and what we were discussing is if i can transfer the entire charge to c2 it could be magnified by changing the capacitance value now instead of uh, transferring the entire charges 
um, when these two capacitors are connected in parallel only a fraction of charges are transferred and that fraction is c1 by uh, it is actually c2 by c1 plus c2 so c1 v1 is the charges charge which we had in the capacitor c1 first and c1 v1 into c2 by c1 plus c2 is the charge which is transferred so this is actually the charge transfer ratio which is c2 by c1 plus c2 now one question here is is it possible to transfer the entire charge from c1 to c2 yes it is possible it is possible only if the c2 value is infinity so if i take c2 common from here and if i do this and making uh, if c2 is put to infinity the charge on c2 can also be equal to c1 v1 now the next question is is it possible to get an infinite capacitor so practically getting infinite capacitor is difficult but definitely we can try for that and in order to get infinite capacitor we have one method uh, yeah so to transfer entire charge <clears throat> so to transfer entire charge uh, what we we should uh, do is c2 should be infinity or if c2 is very much greater than c1 or c2 is infinity it is possible uh, to do that what we are doing is we will just consider the Miller's theorem uh, which you would have studied in your know, lower semester classes. So if you have an impedance of say z and if I put that impedance in the negative feedback of an amplifier with a gain minus a the impedance seen at the input is z by 1 minus the gain if gain is minus a z by 1 plus a. So if the impedance what I have here if, if it is a capacitive impedance uh, 1 by SC1 is equal to 1 by SC into 1 plus A or the capacitance C1 is nothing but C into 1 plus A. So this is the this is the one thing what we want here right. So we have a finite capacitor but we should get a large capacitance out of that. In that case if I keep, place that capacitor in the feedback path of an amplifier with a very high gain it is uh, possible to get high value capacitor. So, uh, we have studied in second uh, unit regarding how to get high gain amplifiers. So, if I have a high gain amplifier here, the capacitance C1 will be very large. Now, uh, yeah, so this principle uh, we will uh, follow here to get an infinite capacitor. So, this is an initial part, um, first switch and the capacitor. Now this is the second capacitor where I need to transfer the entire charge from C1 uh, to the C2. But if I am just connecting C2 the entire charges are not getting transferred only a fraction is getting transferred and that fraction is C2 by C1 plus C2 into C1 V1. Now if I want to transfer the entire charge the capacitor C1 should see an infinite large capacitance and to do to get the infinite large capacitance this finite capacitor should be in the feedback loop of a amplifier. So if I place the op-amp uh, in this way, uh, it is actually equal to, yeah, you can see in this fashion, yeah, uh, this is equal to, uh, uh, from phi to another capacitor is connected in the negative feedback and from here we will get the output. And if you want to write the output expression, actually the output expression is equal to minus of uh, C1 by C2 into V in. So, uh, minus of feedback impedance by input impedance uh, will be same as that. Right. Now, uh, this circuit uh, is known as parasitic sensitive. This um, circuit is basically known as switch capacitor integrator because at each every uh, at uh, the all time instance, whatever V in value is there, uh, which will be sampled by the capacitor, which will be further. Uh, transfer to the capacitor C2 and in each cycle the value in the capacitor will be keep on accumulating. So since this is a accumulator, uh, discrete time accumulator, we used to call this as uh, switch capacitor integrator also. And why it is known as parasitic sensitive is because in an IC each node is associated with a parasitic capacitor. So with uh, in that sense if you look at this node even this node is associated with the parasitic capacitance say Cp. So the circuit is sensitive to parasit parasitic capacitors. So this is a parasitic sensitive switch capacitor integrator. Now um, our aim is to develop a parasitic insensitive switch capacitor integrator. So that we will uh, see how it can be done. 
So now uh, we'll try to draw the complete circuit. Uh, this is your initial switch. This is your capacitor what you have. And we have another capacitor switch here which is the bottom plate sampling thing. So this is 51 and this is 51A. Now here you have the next switch. This is supposed to be 52. And from here we are giving to op amp. This is V out. This is your C2 and this is your C1. And now the problem here is uh, each node is associated with the capacitor. In so here this is the node with the capacitor Cp. And if this capacitor uh, Cp is there, the problem is. Mm. Yeah, actually the CP is a very small capacitor. Uh, also, CP is an unknown capacitor. We exactly don't know the value of the capacitor CP. So, if I am not considering CP, the output voltage can be written as minus C1 by C2 into V in. But in the presence of CP, output is actually minus C1 plus CP because both are in parallel by C2 into V. Now C1 and C2 are uh, the capacitors which are um, which are connected to the circuit intentionally and uh, those are same kind of capacitor which could be pa uh, parallel metal plates. So even though there are some variations uh, since it is a ratio it could be cancelled and the output voltage will be accurate. But since CP is an unknown capacitor and which is a small capacitor and which is made out of some different material. Uh, because the nodes in an IC can create capacitance and uh, the elements of that capacitance could be a metal line or the substrate or anything. Uh, so since CP is a made of a different material, uh, even the so it is a source of error. So we should uh, see uh, how I can um, make the output voltage or even the circuit insensitive to this uh, cap uh, this capacitor capacitor CP that is a uh, that we need to see. <clears throat> so uh, one thing what we can do here is instead of uh, taking uh, output from this plate of the capacitor, uh, if I can take output from the lower plate, see um, both are almost same only because here the uh, voltage is plus C1 into V in and in the other plate it is minus C1 into V. So now since this node is associated with this capacitor, instead of connecting from this point to the uh, further circuit, you can take from the lower point. So uh, it can be done in this way. This is our capacitor. V in now we have this another capacitor here sorry another switch here so 5151 a instead of taking from this point we can take from this point this is 52 and rest of the circuit so if I want to take from this point, uh, then uh, during phi 2, I should add another uh, switch here, phi 2, so that from this point I can take the output. And this uh, node which is having that uh, parasitic capacitance could be avoided. Yeah. So uh, in detail we will see in next lecture. Thank you.